Hello everyone! Welcome to your weekend edition of Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be your general energy reading, reading for the weekend of Friday, August 7th through the 9th. Yes, please keep in mind that time is an illusion and energies are fluid. So just because this is a reading dated for the weekend of the 7th through the 9th, it doesn't mean that it absolutely has to resonate for you at that time. Whenever you're guided to watch this reading and it resonates, then that's the message for you in that moment. Also, please keep in mind that this is a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Hold on just a second. Sorry guys, I wanted to light some sage and realize I didn't have a lighter. <laughs> minor details. Anyway, so, okay, so some of y'all are looking at me right now wearing this hoodie like, what the hell are you doing wearing a hoodie right now? Well, it, I, I've been up for a few hours. It's like 6 a.m. Um, I went to bed really early. Well, not like really super early, but like, I think I fell asleep around like 8 o'clock last night. So I woke up at 2 and couldn't go back to sleep. And so I've just been hanging out working on learning Spanish, watching some Spanish TV, blah, 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 trying to, really trying to get myself to be able to comprehend what is being said and how to um, put sentences together and learning vocabulary and blah, blah, blah. It's all pretty overwhelming, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I'm definitely like pushing myself way out of my comfort zone right now. Not only in the fact that I'm learning Spanish, but I live in Puerto Rico now, so like whatever. But this morning, it was pretty chilly. It, and I've noticed that's been happening lately. Um, uh, there have been a few mornings that have been a little chilly. So I was like, you know what? I don't want to wear a t-shirt. I want to wear one of my hoodies because I don't, I re I'm rarely ever going to get to wear them here. And I brought like almost all of my hoodie collection because I am obsessed with hoodies and graphic tees and all that stuff. And I wanted to take them with me. If, if I got a chance to wear them, I wanted to be able to wear them. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I'm wearing a hoodie. <laughs> okay. Anyway. I hope you guys had a good week. I hope you have a great weekend ahead. Um, if you're watching this later in the day, I hope you had a good day. If you're watching it in your morning, I hope you're having a great morning, yes? Mm. Hey, so question. Um, I was thinking at some point in the near future, I think I might wanna start doing some sort of like weekly thing. Do you, do you guys think that would be too much? How do you feel about that? Let me know in the comments down below. It's just an idea. I'm looking for ways to expand the channel a little bit. And I know I've been, if y'all y'all that have been following me for a while, y'all know I've been saying that shit constantly. Like back when I was still in Brooklyn, I was talking about, you know, doing merchandise and blah, 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 and this, that, and the third. And, and then Puerto Rico came and then COVID hit and everything just got crazy. But I don't know. Just an idea. Just a thought. Let me, let, tell me, let me know what you think about that. Because I've been watching, you guys know Minnow Pond, right? You guys remember me mentioning Minnow Pond? His name is Chris. He's really cool. I really like, I really enjoy watching him. And he's actually, to be honest, he's making me want to learn Lenormand. But, um, and I have a number of Lenormand decks. I could totally le start learning them. But I was watching his weekly things and I was like, I, I, I personally am finding them very helpful. So... You guys let me know. You guys let me know. Yeah? Okay, cool. So with that said, let's get into this, shall we? We shall. <laughs> Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our weekend of Friday, August 7th, through Sunday, August 9th, 2020. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, wait. Did I... No, I did say the right thing. Okay, cool. All right, here we go. Five shuffles for the collective. Para la colectiva. See? One. Uno. Uh-oh. Oh, no, nope, we're going to try that one again. Una vez más. Uno. Dos. Para la colectiva. 
3. Cuatro. Y, y, y cinco. Why did I want to say ocho? Ocho. Ocho. No. Why did I want to say ocho? No. Cinco. Okay. All right. <laughs> did you hear, like, my accent got, like, totally, like, American at that point? Like, ocho. No, dude. It's ocho. <laughs> ay, ay, yeah. Mm. Alrighty, kids. Oop. Okay, well, so far we have the tower at the bottom of the deck. Uh-oh. All right. Stop there, they said. Okay. Ooh, and now we have the lovers at the bottom of the deck. And the two of cups has come out with a bunch of other cards. But that's come out and has fallen, moved over to the side. What we have here in the center um, we have, looks like, three cards. They're face down, and then one card is face up, and that's the Eight of Wands. And to me, this is screaming, this is saying there's some sort of communication that could that needs to be had, and this might get tricky. So let's see. Ace of Swords, the Empress, with Temperance. Okay. Now, Temperance came out sideways. Um... Patience is necessary here. Let's see. Two of Cups, Three of Pentacles, Six of Pentacles. There's Death again. And the Nine of Swords. I'm hearing, I'm looking at the Two of Cups, the Three of Pentacles, and the Six of Pentacles, and I'm hearing working together to build a solid foundation, working together to build a sense of friendship and reciprocity. Yeah, and the tower wants to be seen again with the chariot, ooh. Something is coming together, Spirit just said. Um, with the Eight of Wands, the Ace of Swords, the Empress, and Temperance, I feel like because Temperance came out sideways, it was face down, but it was also sideways. Um, I feel like there might be a lack of patience or someone is needing to have more patience. Someone is be needing to be a little more patient here. Um, and I think because someone knows very clearly what it is that they want with this Ace of Swords here, and they're connected to the, to the Divine. You have Temperance with the Empress. I feel like something is going to be moving very quickly. There could even, I, I keep looking at this Eight of Wands and I keep feeling like there's some sort of communication that's coming. Um, and you actually, you could say that some sort of communication is coming towards an Empress figure. Um, and I also kind of want to say that someone is aware of like who a true or who the true representation of the Divine Mother a Divine Mother, the Divine Feminine Energy, who the true representation of that is. And that could very well be you, the viewer, like you're this Empress Energy. It could also be someone that you're watching, that, that you're connected to, kind of even want to, maybe want to say might be watching for. Um, div divine timing is at play. And I feel like this sense of needing to have a bit more patience and to not interfere with how the universe is bringing things together for you, um, I think, I really feel like that message is more for the feminine here, or whomever this empress is. Now, the other thing that's coming through, and I feel like this would be more on a career or business or just like building your life type level. Because you are connected with the abundance of the universe, right, which would be represented by the empress, um, something, and you know what it is you want, ace of swords, something could be coming together very, very quickly. Something could be moving or developing very quickly, eight of wands. It's like the 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 because you have this connection to the divine and to spirit and to the abundance of the universe, that opens all the doorways for you. So <laughs> I just heard resistance is futile. But what I want to say in terms of that is it's pointless to really try and struggle against all of any of this and to put more resistance into or put any sort of resistance into the situation. Okay. The, I want to say the fact that you're in this divine alignment already is enough to open all the doors that are needed for you to be, for you, needed for, needed to be open for you. 
the fact that you're connected to this divine, to the divine, to this divine abundance is what will open those doors that are necessary, okay? But that's only going to happen in divine timing, temperance, okay? Now, getting down to this second pile here. Ooh, I might sneeze. Never mind. Ugh, okay, getting down to this second pile here, we have the Two of Cups, the Three of Pentacles, the Six of Pentacles, Death, and the Nine of Swords. Yeah, Spirit is saying slowly but surely developing a foundation, developing a sense of trust within one another. You know, it's one thing to have, and, and look, this, we really could be talking about a divine connection here because we have the, the lovers and the two of cups, okay? Um, okay, so what Spirit just said is the lover's energy is real, is in the ether, 1111. The lover's energy is real between certain, between two counterparts, okay? But right now, in the physical representation, in, in the physical, in the 3D life, we have a situation in which you guys are coming together, two of cups, three of pentacles, six of pentacles. But this, again, is the process of divine alignment or divine timing because you are building a sense of trust within each other, a sense of foundation with each other. It's like, and and it's so crazy because I never understood, I really didn't understand this until I got here to Puerto Rico and I had gone through that whole twin flame activation and all that, all of those crazy, crazy energies and all the other crazy things that went down in association with it. Um, but I didn't really fully, I never in my whole life, never really fully understood this until now. But if you really want to have a relationship with someone, a true solid foundational relationship, something that you can rely, rely on and something that you can have confidence that will last you have to have a friend. You have to be friends with this, somebody first. You have to take the time to build a relationship with someone first before you can start to dive in and really commit to a person. You know what I mean? It's necessary. Take me, for example. My, my ex, my ex, my ex-husband. He and I met um, one night, one day, I mean, we had met, on, we met online, but we had been chatting for a little bit and then we decided to get together. Um, and we spent the night with each other, blah, blah, blah. Yes. I mean, it was a hookup, but okay. Um, but there was a hookup that never ended. Like we instantly connected with each other and we were both in pretty fragile states in life at that time. So it made it, so we aligned very well with each other at that time. And then, you know, almost immediately we were in this like really strongly committed relationship that lasted for like nine years, but there was so there was so many tr there was so much trouble. It, it, in in hindsight, in reality, it really wasn't the right relationship for either of us. However, it was the it was a necessary relationship for us at that time in our lives. I mean, I'm I want I'm kind of wanting to pull back and say, okay, well, I'll speak for myself and say it was the right relationship for me at that time in my life because it taught me so much. I'm not gonna speak for him, but also Spirit is saying, no, you can say that. The divine al the alignment was right for the both of you to come together and experience what you experienced together. Okay, so, but my point here is that had we taken the time to really get to know each other or be friends with each other or hang out with each other before we decided to really just dive in head first, like almost immediately pretty much, we probably would have seen or understood that mm, maybe this isn't the right connection for us at this time. Okay, but so I say all that to say you're going through this process right now. Some of you, somebody here is going through this process right now. Two of Cups, Three of Pentacles, Six of Pentacles. You're building a foundation of trust within each other, between each other. Okay, and that's causing a transformation here, death. This is a good thing, you guys, but then you have this Nine of Swords energy with it. And somebody, somebody's freaking out. Somebody's scared. Somebody's like, I, is this really, is this real? Is this really gonna happen? I don't know, but, but... I kinda wanna like take this card and throw it off the table. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna disrespect my cards like that, but, but I, I, I kinda wanna take this energy and just separate. I do, actually, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna separate this energy from this transformative process because this, this is that resistance Spirit was talking about. 
by you freaking out, by you getting caught up in fear and illusion, um, you're actively putting resistance into the situation. Now, that doesn't mean that it's, it's going to really stop coming together unless you do something really drastic and that's like, whoa, like, can you chill? Like, okay. But really, the only resistance that you're going to experience is turmoil within yourself. The more you allow this energy to to, to sneak up on you and, um, you know, and run your life, run rampant through your head. You know what I mean? We're going to go into clarification, but I, I, I really do want to clarify this Nine of Swords specifically. <laughs> Somebody in the comments yesterday asked why Lester doesn't finish his crow. I have no idea. <laughs> he literally cuts it off at the very end. He always has. It's weird. I don't know. Okay. That's Georgie. Hi, George. Anyway. Um, yeah. So we're going to get into the golden. Okay. We're going to use golden universal tarot for this today. Now, I want to talk about this nine of swords first. What is this fear and anxiety? that you're experiencing. That's one. Dos. Tres. Cuatro. Oh, 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 one more. Cuatro. Y cinco. Alrighty, this Nine of Swords energy here. Okay, all right, first of all, you have the Knight of Cups at the bottom of the deck, and then the Six of Wands wanted to show itself. Okay, somebody is freaking out about whether or not they should really pursue something, whether or not they should make an offer, whether or not they should give of their heart. And, ooh, okay, and then with the Six of Swords... I'm not, sorry, not the Six of Swords, the Six of Wands, and now Justice that just, just showed itself. It's like, no, no, this is the right thing for you to do. Your heart is leading you in the right place. And that's, and thus, entonces, we have the Nine of Swords energy, energy in which someone is freaking out about it. Someone's like, I don't know if I should do this. A little bit more on this Nine of Swords, please. Oh! Oh, boy. Oh. Okay, you have the Nine of Wands. Don't give up. Do not give up. Please do not give up. You also have... You have the King of Cups, the Four of Swords, the Two of Pentacles, the Empress, again, and the Moon. Okay? So, uh, with the Moon... With the Moon, I... Ooh, with the Moon, I just heard Transformative Process that is leaving you a little bit in the dark. You can't, you kind of can't quite see exactly what's going on or exactly what's, what's going to happen or how things are going to develop, how things are going to come together. And yet the moon also represents your intuition. It can represent fear, yes. And it also can represent illusions. Yes, okay, that makes sense. But um, you need to trust your intuition here because King of Cups is saying, you know exactly what your feelings are. You are very much in tune with what your feelings are. Do not, do not allow, do not allow anything in the external or anyone in the external try and tell you that you're being foolish or you're being stupid or you can't do that when your heart is like, no, this is exactly what I need to do. My heart is in the right place. Now, this also needs to be a balance between head over heart, two of pentacles, uh, a balance between head and heart mind and heart. You need to use both of them. You need to really, uh, especially like, okay, so you feel a bunch of stuff here, King of Cups, but you need to be out, able to allow yourself to sit back and say, okay, there's a time and place for everything. How do I do this? I know I want to move forward. I know I want to make a gesture. I know I want to make an offer. I know I want to, I, I want to do something, but how do I do that? There's a time and place for everything. The Empress here, Spirit just said, the Empress here is symbolizing the divine feminine energies of abundance. 
I, and I also, I kind of feel like the Empress energy here is encouraging you to allow this situation to grow and develop into what it's really meant, truly meant to be. That's going, over time, that's going to take time. So no, you don't know exactly what it is that's going on right now, but you can trust your intuition. And if your intuition is saying to you, yes, this is right, please follow through with this, then please follow through, right? Okay, let's go to the next pile then. Let's talk about the this one, the Two of Cups, the Three of Pentacles, the Six of Pentacles, and Death. <laughs> okay, we have the Eight of Swords at the bottom of the deck, but then we also have the Wheel of Fortune, the Knight of Wands, and the Five of Wands. Right, and also, right, okay, because this Nine of Swords energy that we just clarified was connected to these cards here. So yes, there is a sense of deep inner conflict here. But also, things are changing. Wheel of Fortune. And somebody is activated, somebody is moving forward passionately, and yet you're still conflicted by it. Five of Wands. And what I really feel like here is you are probably conflicted by it because of what's gone on in the past. Eight of Swords. Uh, uh, situations you've experienced in the past that have maybe boxed you in <clears throat> or maybe have tried to box you in in the past and now those fears or those memories are coming back up. Uh, ooh, okay, okay. So the Five of Wands is inner conflict, yes, but it's also the opinions of others sometimes. And so there could be some other people around you in terms of like surrounding this situation that are like putting their two cents in and what they have to say about it or what the, or, or the opinions that they hold just in life in general are in direct, um, what's the word, direct opposition to where it is you're trying to move towards, what the, the whatever it is you're trying to create or whatever it is changing or, or growing for you right now and that's really them being in this eight of swords energy and i heard don't let that rub off on you because it's not your responsibility to carry that burden that's their opinion that's their lives that's okay i'm not saying anybody's wrong i'm not saying anybody's right but i'm also not saying anybody's wrong so live your life do your thing i mean i okay that's your opinion that's great I mean, I don't mean to be rude or anything, but like opinions are like assholes. Everybody's got them. And quite frankly, I'm in direct alignment with myself. Knight of Cups, the chariot with the page of wands underneath that. Putting in the energy to allow this, wow, this situation to grow, Seven of Pentacles, into the Ten of Cups here. Don't, don't allow yourself, walk away. Walk away from these energies, Five of Swords. If there are people in your ear talking all kinds of mess or saying things that are a direct opposition to what it is you know you're in alignment with, then you need to just not even engage. Just nod and smile. Don't worry about it. Spirit just said it's not yours to handle. It's not yours to carry. It's their burden, not yours. They have. We all have free will. We're all allowed to believe what it is we want to believe. That doesn't mean that we have to agree with each other. And that doesn't also, that doesn't mean that we have to hate each other just because we have different beliefs. It's really not even about that. So again, with that five of swords energy, energy that just came out, don't even engage. Don't even try and argue. Don't even try and, no, like, okay, cool. That's how you feel about it. All right, cool. Thank you for your input. I appreciate that. I mean, thank you for sharing your feeling, your thoughts with me. I appreciate that. But I do not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to wear that. No. Birdie. All right. Last but not least, let's clarify the Eight of Wands, the Ace of Swords, the Empress, and Temperance. Yes?
At the bottom of the deck, we have the Page of Swords. And then we have the Sun, the Hierophant, oh geez, the World, and the Queen of Cups. And then we also, ooh, ooh, we also have Death. All right, guys. So look, we, <laughs> holy moly, we have the Lovers and the Two of Cups. And we have the King and the Queen of Cups. So these are divine partners. These are, these are people that are 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 in our direct alignment with each other that are a match I mean, I just heard a match made in heaven people that are meant to be together people that are uh, people that align with each other people that flow with each other people that it's this is a, this this is a good match it's a perfect match right there okay and so what I was saying entonces what I was saying earlier about um you know this could be the so someone could really recognize ace of swords who their divine empress is, who their match made in heaven is meant to be with. And thus, and now we have the sun, the hierophant, death, the world, all major arcana with the queen of cups. So this could really absolutely mean marriage potential. Death and the, hier and the hierophant can definitely represent marriage. I just heard the sun is shining on this queen of cups. Like this queen of cups is illuminated beyond belief right now. And this king of cups here may be, the divine masculine spirit just said, may be so enamored that he just straight up doesn't know what to do about it. He can't think straight. He can't see straight. I mean, like, he's all wrapped up in his emotions about it and he doesn't know it. Or he doesn't know what, oh, maybe he... He doesn't know what to do about it. He doesn't know what to do with it. And you, and the Queen of Cups might actually be in the very exact same energy, too. Like, holy shit, this is my person. What the hell do I do? I don't know how to handle this. Oh, my God. I just, like, every time, every time, every time I, I see them, I just, I get so nervous. Like, I I can talk to anybody, but I have trouble talking to this person because I don't want to fuck it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is really good, you guys. But like I said, over time, you guys need to allow this situation to develop because the more and more you get to know each other, the more that you interact with each other, the stronger your bond will be. And so then eventually when the time comes to say, hey, you know, can we like, you know, we've been cool for a while. Do you, you want to go on a date or something? Or like, do you want to like, do you want to like take this to the next level? I literally just heard, do you want to like, do you want to marry me? <laughs> But it takes time to get there. So when the timing is right, hey, no fighting. So when the timing is right, it will happen. Just allow yourselves to get there. Move forward slowly but steadily. Allow yourself to go with the flow, okay? And then with the Page of Swords at the bottom of the deck, yeah, Page of Swords and then the King of Swords. Someone is really... Someone is really trying to observe this situation. Now, this King of Swords, it could be the masculine here, but actually it could also be both of you. But I feel like there's somebody here that has friends out there that they're trying to, they're, the King of Swords is like, yo, can you go get some information for me? Find out this and that for me. Because someone doesn't want to get rejected. But someone is stable and grounded and sturdy and does not want to let go of this situation. And has made a decision, okay, doesn't want to let go of this situation because they've made a decision. And they've put something really toxic to rest. And they are moving on from rough waters to calmer waters. And there we go. The Emperor and the Empress. I just heard divine alignment is key here. And now, and now Spirit is bringing me back to this Temperance card. You gotta stay in your alignment. Don't allow things to get you down, okay? <laughs> I 
<laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm being nosy and okay. I'm not, we're going to stop there. <laughs> we're going to stop there. <sighs> okay. Let me start a new file and then I will get us our Oracle guidance. Yes. Hold on a second. Hello. Okay. So we're going to go with Beyond Lemuria today for today's message for oh, this weekend's message. My, uh, three shuffles. Five shuffles. Uno. Dos. Tres. Cuatro. Y cinco. All right, Oracle Guidance, please, Spirit, to close out this weekend's reading. There we go. Okay. Wow, all right, cool. So you have, on the bottom of the deck, you have the high heart chakra, ecstatic bliss, and I really feel like this is what you're connected to that is allowing this divine love or this divine union or this divine partnership to take shape. Yeah. But then... The card that came out is card number one, Earth, Earth Star Chakra, Initiation. And I'm getting with this that you're allowing yourself to ground this situation into the Earth, but also uh, into physical reality, I should say. But also, this is the start. This is the new beginning. This is a brand new start that you've been asking for, Spirit just said. Please allow this to take shape the way it needs to. Please allow this plant to grow and develop into the beautiful creature that it is meant to be. That's going to take time. Obviously, things are instant in higher dimensional realms, but we're in the third dimension. Well, we're in, I mean, I guess we could say you're in the third dimension. However, many of us, those of us that really, those of you that really follow me, we're in the process of raising our vibrations to more of a fifth dimensional reality, ultimately. I kind of want to say we're still, for the vast majority of us, we're still kind of moving, passing through the fourth dimension right now. But either way, we're in a physical reality. And physical things take time to develop. Okay? But let's read this. Earth Star Chakra. Initiation. Oneness. Collective consciousness. Anchoring transmissions from the higher realms. Sacred Earth knowledge. Integration of divine... Oh, integration of the divine. Working with grid lines. You are standing at a gateway in the, into the unknown with trust in your heart, ancient remembering in your soul, and inner illumination to light the way. You have access to the seat of creation, the spark of existence, and the codes that hold the blueprints of who and what you, we are. This place is clear and grounded, despite moving through multidimensional realms and able to bridge worlds while functioning in physical reality. The higher you reach for the divine and the realms of spirit, the more important it is to anchor deeply into the earth. Restore. Explore clearing meditations, self-energy work, and put intention into the meaningful parts of your life. Find ways to balance your life. Be aware of the times of day that are more conductive to different states of consciousness, such as flow, meditation, and productivity. The themes with this card are integration of spirit and the eternal self. How you balance spiritual and physical reality. Uh, yeah. A healing position for to work with this chakra is at the feet. 30 centimeters below the feet. And then the color wash is earth brown. If you want to do some color therapy to work with this earth brown. And then you know what? I'm going to read high heart chakra too. High heart chakra, ecstatic bliss, divine love, selflessness, spiritual compassion, oneness through heart-centered bliss, healing, gratitude, giving love, dharma, patience, and joy. 
This card taps into the blissful oneness we feel as we drop away our edges and protective containers. This, this is the place where we feel held and seen, enough to flow into oneness, where the eternal part of me meets the eternal part of you. This is the selfless state where our higher selves commune for illuminated perspective on how we share, gift, and lift others in our joyful overflow. To restore, it says, consider your life purpose by exploring what allows you to give joy. The themes with this card are the ways that you can bring joy to yourself and others. The healing position is the thymus gland, behind your sternum, a little above your heart. And the color wash is iridescent pink. Wonderful. Uh, okay, Spirit is saying this too. Throat chakra. Express your truth. So don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to speak your heart. Don't be afraid to follow your heart. Yes, there is a time and place for everything. Timing is key here, all right? But don't be afraid to express yourself. Because quite honestly, quite honestly, and this is why, and this is why it takes, it needs to take time for these relationships to, to, to build and develop. Because if you can't really be yourself with somebody, around somebody, like be your true authentic self, then how do you expect to have a relationship with them? And how do you know that you can truly and safely be your true authentic self with them if you don't spend time getting to know them? Right? Okay. <laughs> So, there you have it. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I hope you have a fantastic weekend, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee Monday morning. Yeah? Take care. Mm -hmm. Bye. <laughs>